Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Coming to you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today, we are going to be talking about the tax benefits of home ownership. Joining us today is CPA and owner of the Chadwick Group, Don Chadwick. Without further ado, let's get Don on to join us. Hi, Don. Hey there. How, How are, are you? Good. How are you today? Pretty good. Good. Hey, uh, thank you for inviting me to uh, join you. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today. It's great to have you on. And, um, you know, we all know that there are many benefits of being a homeowner. And um, some people may not realize that there are some tax benefits as well. So, um you have been a CPA and doing accounting for uh, a number of years, and you own your own uh, practice in uh, in town in Lake Orion and service many, many uh, individuals and businesses in and around the area, myself included. So I'm very happy to have you joining us today. Um, and I will just say to our viewers that the information shared today, you know, the, the tax laws, right, they change from year to year. Um, so what we're sharing today may not be applicable, um, you know, in future years or maybe years ago, it wasn't the case. Um, and uh, you should always check with your accountant for your, you know, details specific to yourself. And if you don't have one, Don is always available to help. So, <laughs> so, so Don, what are, uh, what are some of the tax benefits of home ownership? Well, uh, when you, after you purchase a home, uh, you have a number of, uh, uh, ongoing, uh, potential benefits as itemized deductions. Uh, first of all, the mortgage interest you pay each year mm -hmm. is, uh, for qualified residences are, uh, fully deductible. If you can, if you can itemize, uh, the maximum level of a mortgage that would qualify is a $750,000 mortgage balance. Uh, anything above that is not deductible. Uh, well, up to seven fifty dollars is deductible, but sure. the excess, say you have a million dollar mortgage, uh, two hundred and fifty dollars equivalent would not be deductible. Uh, so you have the mortgage interest component and then the property taxes that you pay during the year, uh, these are uh, also deductible. So one thing the that, business. oh, I was going to say, I'm sorry. One thing that people may not realize, those who rent, those costs are all wrapped into what you pay in rent. Only you don't get the tax benefit of those items, the mortgage interest, the property taxes, um, because dwellings all have property taxes. And um, so somebody is paying those, being your landlord, if you rent. So, um, you know, that could be something that is a benefit then to you is you not, are not only building equity, but you can also have some tax uh, benefits and discounts, if you will, along the way. Right. And, uh, you know, the tax effect on these uh, interest and in taxes, uh, you know, can make your uh, effective monthly payment uh, much cheaper than, uh, what you'd be paying for a comparable, uh, uh, payment of rent. Right. Absolutely. So, and, and that's in the short term and then the long term, you know, as, as you hold on to your property, you build equity and, you know, values tend to, um, increase over time. So you're, you're having the long-term benefit as well. Yeah, they aren't making a lot more uh, land, right. so yeah. <laughs> uh, housing is always going to appreciate yes. outside of extraneous events, but those things disappear with time, as we've seen in the past. Yes. Uh, other things, th there's a, a minor benefit as you're uh, owning the house uh, called, these are energy credits. Okay. Uh, these are credits for uh, doing things to uh, improve the energy efficiency of your home. Uh, but, you know, even a $10,000 furnace 
uh, purchase will only get you $250 credit. Okay. So it, it's not like it's a significant item, but I just right. mentioned it because it is available. And sure. then, of course, you have a $500 lifetime amount for the credit. So uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's a very nominal thing, and I just mentioned it because it's there. Sure. Well, uh, I, you know, every little bit helps. So even if it's, you know, a small amount, um, you know, it's it's still a credit that you would not otherwise receive. So. Uh, then also, I, I guess uh, the, the only other major element is uh, when you sell that uh, that home that you've uh, owned, uh, if you own and live in your principal residence two of the last five years, mm -hmm. you get to exclude $500,000 worth of capital gain on the sale of the home uh, if you're filing a joint return. Or a single, it's 250000 And there's no repurchase requirement. In the old days, you had to buy a house that cost more than the house that you sold right. to be able to get a deferral. Well, that's gone. Right. So you right. Uh, sell your, you sell your house, take your money, and and run or yeah. do whatever. <laughs> yeah, it used to money. be that you know you sold your home and you needed to make sure that you were ready for the next purchase and to roll it in um, so that you didn't get hit with these capital gains. But now that's changed, and you don't you don't necessarily need to go into another home or right away. Um, you know, if you, you plan to do something else short term, maybe you decide to go travel the world for a couple of years in between uh, owning homes. So you can sell your home. You can um, avoid paying the capital gains on any profit um, up to those limits for that home. And maybe you're going to use that profit to go do that traveling. So so what um, you know, when we say again, does that mean if somebody sells a home for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that that is the maximum or can you give us a little more detail as to what um you know what that entails okay well first of all you take the purchase price of the house okay. uh so say you're talking about a two hundred fifty thousand sale say you uh bought it for a hundred mm -hmm. um and then you had another uh fifty thousand of improvements so that becomes your cost basis. Okay. So 100,000 purchase price plus 50,000 improvements equals your cost basis. Okay. Then you turn around and sell it. Well, you sold it for 250,000. So uh, your cost basis is 150,000. You have a gain of 100. Okay. So therefore your uh, gain being under 500,000 mm -hmm. is fully uh, excludable. Okay. Uh, because you get, you'll you get a uh, 1099 from the sale of the house reporting the gross profit, you do have to report that sale on your tax return. But uh, it's, uh, you yeah, know, if the forms are, if, if you understand the forms correctly, uh, it's very easy to flow through to show that it's a, an excluded gain on the sale of a principal residence. Right. And, and every um, closing, that is a document that gets filled out um, by the seller. And it is for the IRS because they like to know everything that we do. So you do fill out that form and they ask you the questions. Have you owned, you know, have you lived in the home at least two of the last five years? Um, you know, there's there's a number of questions that are asked. And so that is what is used along with when you go to do your taxes with your accountant at tax time um, to determine if you are excluded from paying the gains on that sale. Right. So, uh, one quick note, uh, I, I get in my pra practice a lot of people that think that the uh, the uh, gain is based on the proceeds of the sale, Okay, which is net of the mortgage. That is not correct. Mortgage balance is not part of the cost, so that does not reduce the gain, have, it, have any effect on the gain at all. Okay. So just an aside that... Uh, is a common trap. Yeah, that that is a good point because many sellers look at that. Well, I sold, you know, this was the purchase price for my home. You know, the the mortgage balance was paid off. It was this amount. My net proceeds, you know, is this amount. 
And that is not what is used for the 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 basis, right? So it's the, right. the full purchase price, whether you paid cash for your home or you, you know, use the help of a, a bank or a lender to borrow the funds to purchase the home. That is not, um, that is not included. That is a separate, separate piece. So, so it's really important though, if you're doing some home improvement projects, you know, no matter how long you've lived in your home, right. To save those receipts and keep good records of what you've done to the home, because that, that that's very important uh it's 10 years down the road when you're trying to pull together your uh cost of your improvements uh it might take a little bit more than uh a uh, simple memory jogger to uh <laughs> come up with the right numbers and make sure that you have everything right uh, accounted for well, to uh, reduce the gain i i know that yeah simple memory jog i mean there's when you have so many different numbers and things, you know, throughout the years. Um, I, what I have found to make it very easy is anytime, because most most companies still provide a paper receipt, um, you know, or sometimes it's an emailed receipt, but I keep a folder. So I have a home improvement folder. I put all of the receipts for any, you know, remodeling or home improvement project that I've done on the home and just keep it all in there. I also have a, an electronic folder on my computer for those that haven't come as a paper copy. So um, it definitely helps. You would still, you'll still take a little bit of time, you know, adding up all the numbers, but at least you have them all in one place and, and don't need to worry about, um, you know, hunting through, you know, like you said, potentially a decade's worth of receipts. So, so yeah. Well, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Don. I appreciate you coming on and joining us today. So those of you who, um, you know, you're still renting and maybe you're considering, does it make sense for me to make a move? Um, you know, you'll always want to, to defer to your accountant as far as the specifics of the home that you're purchasing and your deductions from a mortgage balance and property interest perspective. But there are a number of benefits to, um, to home ownership. They're not all short-term. Some of them are long-term benefits. Um, but they are there for you when you're ready. So thank you so much for joining us today, Don. Thank you all for tuning in, whether live or on the replay. And we'll see you next week, Tuesday at 12 on Team with Tracy. Thanks.